Good morning, folks. We've got several galactic-related science stories to hit today. There was a large earthquake in the southwest Pacific, and of course we are going to be looking at the sun as well, where activity continues slowly climbing upward from the brief quiet break, and that is where we'll begin. The last 24 hours on our star included an M-class solar flare, several filament snaps, one gorgeous eruption, and some activity on the far side. One of the filaments that erupted did so in two ways we can be happy about. It erupted before it turned in to face the Earth, and it offered us a gorgeous sight as it exited the corona. There are several other filaments we'll need to continue monitoring, and a couple good-sized sunspot groups as well. These have been growing and spreading for the last two to three days, and so we enter the weekend with our eyes firmly set on the sun, awaiting more eruptions and flares. The big earthquake struck near the Kermadec Islands, luckily out to sea and relatively deep, so no major damage concerns from that one. Hurricane Lee is still slowly tracking towards the Americas and is now expected to become a Category 5 storm, creeping closer over the weekend here as well, and this one could be damaging wherever it makes landfall. Let's go on to our galactic science stories next. Up first, a star passing close to the galactic nucleus in a galaxy 500 million light years away is on a super short orbit of 22 days, and every time it swings in, a blast of X-ray light flashes from the core. We've seen this type of activity at other galaxies, including our own, but not usually with such a burst on such a short and regular cycle. And it makes me look at papers like this one, which hypothesized that stellar formation outbursts blasted away the dust in these early galaxies. And I can't help but wonder if we can really blame the formation of stars and if perhaps it was actually major activity from that galactic nucleus as well. Seems a bit more efficient a way to uniformly clear a galaxy than stellar formation, which in theory should push gas and dust in all directions, not just clear it, but guesses will be guesses. Lastly here, folks, James Webb continues to provide reasons to think that astronomers have to guess again when it comes to that galactic formation history. Nothing about most of the galaxies it's seeing in the deepest space conforms to what they expected. And while there's an increasingly prevalent acknowledgement of this issue, there hasn't been much in the way of offering alternative answers. The more they see, the more they realize they don't know as much as they thought. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn a lot more in the resource links listed in the description box below the video. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.